G'day. Glenn Morris here again with another Tech Quickie on 4777 Part 1 2024 edition. Now this is Quickie number two. So today we're going to talk about just kind of two topics, uh, interface protection and EV charging. But before I dive into it, I've, everyone's been asking me, where can I get a copy of the standard? Well, you know the answer. You can get it from Standards Australia. Uh, uh, costs you a fortune. What's the other option? Well, you can get it for free. Yeah, free. Not only that, you can get 10 of the major standards for free just by signing up to the Smart Energy Council Smart Installer Program. It's being sponsored, so you don't have to pay a cent for it. Sign up for free, get copies, uh, all 10 of the major standards, plus you also get access to some excellent um, CPD content. So CPD content produced by the awesome Jeff Bragg, my mate. Uh, in fact, I'd like to acknowledge Jeff. He gave me some assistance in producing these tech quickies to make sure that, you know, I was on the, on the number. But if you really want to dive deep, you're going to watch his tech twickies, uh, oh, sorry, his tech slows, because they're deep dives uh, into AS4777 part 1 2024. And not only that, you get CPD points for every video you watch. So go straight to the Smart Energy Council's website, sign up for the Smart Installer program, get those free standards. Anyway, back to the quick techie for, uh, oh, sorry, the tech quickie. Uh, getting a little, my merds waddle there. So I said I was going to focus on interface protection and EV charging. I touched on it on the last tech wiki, but what we've done in this standard is align with IEC terminology. So rather than just sort of invent our own terms for little old Australia, we're using terms that are used in IEC documents. So instead of uh, secondary protection uh, or <laughs> network protection or whatever you want to call it, we now call it interface protection. That's where there is something between the uh, DNSP and your IES system that gives a level of confidence and safety of that system over and above whatever an individual IES or inverter provides. Remember, you no longer require to, um, um, interface protection for systems uh, under 200 kVA, though it's at the discretion of the DNSP. So there you go. That's that's a big move from the old 30 uh, kVA point. Now, the set points have aligned with 4777 part two, so there's no confusion about what those set points are for secondary protection, uh, sorry, interface protection. Got to get those names right. Now, there's an interesting uh, little side note here. Uh, interface protection is not required for multiple electrical installations, uh, such as embedded networks like retirement villages. Now, of course, Zill, the DNSP, will make that call, but chances are you can actually go way over 200 kVA still without needing interface protection. Now, when it comes to how do you isolate an inverter system, uh, we talked about the fact that uh, in the previous tech quickie that you can have no more than two IES is connected to a switchboard with load. But if those IESs are on a ganged switch, they're effectively one device, one main switch for inverter systems. So you can use ganging as another way of getting more uh, IESs onto a single switchboard uh, with or without loads. Now there's a bit of a, a, a problem when you're doing a big system where you've got 10 inverters in a row and the first one's right next to the main switchboard and the 10th one's way over there somewhere. Well, now we allow the uh, rule about the three meters in line of sight, you don't require an isolator at the inverter itself. Yep, but what about the one that's way over there? Well, as long as the first one is within three meters and line of sight, and the last one and all the others are within line of sight, then you actually only need to have uh, the isolator in the switchboard within three meters of that first inverter. Now that was quite a wordy way of saying it, but go and read the standard. It, it'll, it'll really nail uh, the details on that one. Anyway, let's move on to uh, EVs. Now this is a, a big change. Our standard actually now addresses the different ways that uh, electric vehicles can interface with a load or with the grid. Now there's two basic ways they can interface. What we call DC EV supply equipment or AC EV supply equipment. And both of those can provide either supplementary or alternative supply modes. So EVs with an alternative supply arrangement uh, are not required to comply with 4777 part two because they don't parallel with the grid. Remember, alternative supply is one that is an alternative to the grid, no grid paralleling, right? So you, if you have a system that isolates the grid and provides power to the installation from an EV, it doesn't require 4777 part two. 
Okay, now let me explain a bit about uh, modes. We don't sort of say, oh, it's a, it's a fast charger or it's a slow charger. We have uh, four modes that we describe in the standard. In fact, these are international terminologies for how uh, EV charging works. Now, modes one and two are plug-in charging devices, and those are not permitted to be reverse power. So we ignore modes one and two in the standard with respect to uh, providing power to an installation. Now, mode three is the one where you have a um, AC, EVSE on the wall that you plug into your vehicle. And mode four is where you have a DC connection uh, directly from the vehicle to the installation. So that's generally what people think of as fast charging. Now, both mode three and mode four um, will allow power flow. So for um, reverse power transfer, the mode must be connected by permanently installed equipment. You can't have a, a plug-in mode three or mode four device on the wall, but the, uh, the end that goes to the vehicle, of course, is a uh, appropriate plug. It's unlikely, I should say, that mode three will be adopted by vehicle manufacturers, because that means that the vehicle needs to have 4777 part two, because it's the vehicle that's actually got the conversion device that converts from DC to AC. So I suspect we'll only see mode four uh, in bi-directional uh, use. This is a pretty quick tech quickie, but I want a big thank you to, once again, Jeff Braggs for his assistance and the Smart Energy Council for that amazing offer of free standards if you sign up for the Smart Installer program. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. <laughs> it really helps my channel grow. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching another tech quickie from me, Glenn Morris at the Smart Energy Lab. Check it.